project I started with a 22 by 18 inch frame that I had picked up at a garage sale. Although I did not film the preparation of this frame, I do prepare all my frames the same. I remove the backings, I remove the clips, I remove the cardboard, and then I remove the glass. And then I take Elmer's glue and I put it around the perimeter of the back of the frame where the glass would sit. Then I replace the glass and take Elmer's glue one more time and put it around the perimeter of the back of the frame in the same spot, only this time on top of the glass in the cr and in the crease area. This needs to dry overnight and sometimes up to 24 hours depending on how much glue you put on it. This serves two purposes. It serves to hold the glass in place and it ho also helps to prevent any resin leaks. I had picked up a Happy Easter stencil from on Amazon and I took it and I put it at the top of my project and I used painter's tape to secure it down. And then I took a Sharpie oil-based marker and went ahead and outlined the Happy Easter. Now, um, the thing is with these oil-based markers, when you are um, outlining or stenciling, you need to just lightly draw in. Do not push down because if you push down, it releases too much ink and it will actually seep underneath the stencil and you'll have a mess. So what I do is I just lightly outline it with a very fine point oil-based black Sharpie and then I remove the stencil and then I go ahead and I fill it in with the, a thicker Sharpie marker. And this is what works best for me. You guys can do it any way you want. As far as stenciling, you can do it with paint, but just know that paint on glass is more difficult than paint on canvas. And you can only um, put one very light layer on at a time and you have to let it dry for a half an hour between coats. So anyway, I went ahead and I filled this in and then next I had made up a drawing of a bunny rabbit. And I went ahead and I put that on the back. I taped that to the back of my uh, glass because I'm going to be um, copying it on the front. And I went ahead and I secured that down with some painter's tape. Next, I took clear Elmer's glue and I went ahead and traced around the perimeter of the rabbit doing his arms, his ears, everything. And then I took a rhinestone chain that I had picked up on Amazon. And I believe this is the iridescent with the gold backing. And I went around and I traced over the clear Elmer's glue line. And it's really important to use clear Elmer's glue because it will dry perfectly clear and you will not see it with the resin. Now I have this heavy duty scissors. It does have to be cut and um, it's in your best interest to use a heavy duty scissors. You can use a regular scissors, but um, it, you'll have a harder time and you probably will ruin them. <laughs> anyway, I picked that up on Amazon. Everything that I use in this video, I will link under the description. And then you do need the, to let this dry for a couple hours before you do anything else. Next, I had found this earring that I thought would work perfect for the eye, but some of the gold had come off along the perimeter. So I decided I was going to go ahead and color in the gold with my uh, oil-based Sharpie, or it's not a Sharpie, an oil-based gold marker, metallic marker. And so I just went ahead and uh, painted that around the perimeter, and it's real pretty. It's nice and shiny, and it um, really worked well. And while that was drying, I got out my glass. So this is glass that I had picked up around Christmas time, and it's actually called yellow glass that they had at Michael's, but they do not carry it anymore. But you can use um, any other kind of glass from Michael's, or, um, or you can color your own glass. They always have the silver reflective glass at Michael's that you can color any color that you want. But this is called Ashland Decorative Filler and the original color was yellow, although it does look gold. So I continued to fill the bunny in and then I started with his ears and I took some pink Ashland Decorative Filler and um, 
to hold that down so it was easiest to stay in the center of the ear, I put some clear Elmer's glue down first. And it's in your best interest to let that dry before you continue on. But of course I didn't. But it really is in your best interest. And then I actually believe I put a little more pink on top of that after I filled the sides in. And then I went ahead and glued down the bunny's eye and then filled in the rest of the face. Doesn't he look cute? Next I found another little piece of jewelry to use as the bunny's nose. So next I decided to add a little um, lighter chest hair to the bunny so I moved a little of the glass over and I took the regular silver reflective Ashland decorative filler and put that right in the chest area. I thought that would look cute. So it wasn't all one color, just to give them a little extra color. And then I went ahead and um, made some whiskers for them. And I took the two millimeter rhinestone, I believe these are the crystal clear chains with the silver background. And I made uh, three little whiskers for him from that. And next, after I put the whiskers on, I used some painter's tape to clean up the canvas. I find painter's tape is the easiest way to get little pieces of glass and residue off of the glass without putting fingerprints all over it. And then next, I take my stained glass strips that have been tumbled and I uh, put those on the canvas for the flowers that I'm about to put on in a few minutes. So when I'm not working with the canvas, I cover it with a great big piece of paper so dust particles don't get into it. And then next I want to show you what I made the bunny rabbit's tail from. Um, I didn't film putting it on. So to create the bunny tail, I took something called Celestial Fire Glass. This is clear fire glass that I picked up on Amazon. I took this and I poured it into a bowl and then I took something called Artist Loft Iridescent Medium, took a great big spoonful of it and plopped it on top of the glass in the bowl and then just went ahead and mixed it all together for a couple of minutes. And um, <clears throat> then I plopped it down on some parchment paper. You have to put it on a non-stick paper and spread it far apart so that they don't stick together, dry stuck together. And then um, once I had it all out on the parchment paper, I took an iridescent glitter and sprinkled it all over the wet glass. And then I let this dry overnight. So the stained glass stems that I had, I had made prior to this. And um, I do cut my own stained glass. I am not a stained glass expert, but I did learn to cut stained glass on YouTube. And there are many channels out there dedicated to stained glass. And it's the great thing about it is it's free, a free way to learn how to cut stained glass. So anyway, I cut um, a bunch of strips for stems all at once, put them in my MJR 45-pound tumbler. And you can tumble them anywhere from a uh, day to a week, depending on the effect you want. Um, actually, after about 12 hours, the um, sharp edges are no longer sharp. You won't cut yourself on them. And they really turned out <clears throat> beautiful. And um, some of them did break, but most of them uh, held their length, and they really turned out nice. So you can tumble stained glass. Next, I took the reflective Ashland decorative filler that I had gotten from Michael's, and sprayed it with the translucent purple Tamaya spray paint. And it came out to be this beautiful purple color that I used for the flowers. After I had assembled my purple flowers, I went ahead and I started assembling the yellow flowers. This yellow glass is glass that I had broken up, shaped, tumbled in my tumbler, and then sprayed with the canary yellow, Krylon stained glass translucent spray paint and they turned out beautiful. So here I'm just trying um, to put some centers in the middle of the yellow flowers and I end up deciding on these two gold pieces of jewelry that they're actually earrings that I had picked up at a garage sale and um, they're oval so I think they work out perfect. And 
because for the third flower I did not have, um, because they're earrings, there's only two, <laughs> so I needed to create a third center for the third flower. So what I did was I took um, a necklace that I had also picked up at a garage sale and removed the black oval bead from it. And then I took my metallic gold marker and I went ahead and I painted around the perimeter of the black bead so that it would match the other two beads. Then I took some more of the yellow glass and just built the flower around the bead that I had just placed on there. Next, I took some glass that I had actually picked up from the Dollar Tree. It's a very pale green and put it at the bottom. And by accident, I moved the camera and you can't see me putting the next bit of green glass on. But here I'm showing you. So the first bit of glass that was the glass from the Dollar Tree, it's like a pale green. That's what I put on first. And then this other glass is actually celestial glass that I sprayed with the Krylon Stained Glass Summer Green Translucent Spray Paint. And I just sprinkled a little bit of that on top of the lighter colored green. And then before it's ready for resin, I take a piece of uh, painter's tape and I go all over the canvas and get off all of the uh, cat hair, residue, um, smaller pieces of glass, anything. This works really well because you don't end up getting fingerprints on, trying to get glass off. And uh, the only thing is if you do go over the wording, it sometimes will pick that up a little bit. So you might have to um, paint over it again. And then I took my painter's tape and put it around the perimeter to help prevent resin leaks. It's much easier to do if you do it before you put the glass on, but I always forget. <laughs> so the resin I'm using for this project is Art Resin, a one-to-one -one ratio resin that you mix slowly in the cup for three minutes to help prevent bubbles. I usually drizzle it over the glass first to make sure everything's covered, and then I do up in the corners and around the perimeters. Now, um, I did end up drizzling this over the yellow glass, which is fairly transparent. Um, I don't know, you can or you cannot, it just depends. And I've explained before that the lighter the color of the transparent glass, um, it's in your best interest maybe not to drizzle the resin over it because it makes it more transparent and it doesn't show up as well. It, it just depends. This ended up um, turning out okay. You could really see it, but um, that shade is really questionable. Uh, it, it would just have to be up to you. Anyway, I put the um, resin around the corners and along the edges, spreading it out carefully. This uh, resin is supposed to be, they call it self-leveling, which must mean something else because it doesn't spread out all over the canvas. You really have to help make it move and make sure everything is, is covered. And um, <clears throat> then I use my little heat gun kitchen torch to get rid of the bubbles. I use baby wipes a lot when working with resin to kind of clean up around the perimeter and clean my hands, but I also use rubbing alcohol and um, sometimes the rubbing alcohol might take the paint off around the frame so you got to be careful with that but it really works well with taking the um, resin off your hands if you should have any on your hands and of course we should be wearing gloves and here you can see I added some more flowers down to the very bottom I thought it needed um, some more glass and um, I used little black stones to do the center. And then I also had to add some leaves onto it. I forgot about putting uh, leaves on the stems. So I uh, put used some of my tumbled glass leaves. And then it was pretty much done. It has to sit on a flat level surface overnight. After about 12 hours, you can touch it. It takes Art resin takes a full 72 hours to cure. You have about a 45 minute work time. It needs to cure at temperatures between uh, 72 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. All resins are different. You need to read the directions for the resin that you are using. Hey everyone, <laughs> hope you enjoyed the video. You can see my Valentine stuff in the background. Today is actually only February 6th. And um, I'm done with my Valentine's videos. Uh, I mean, they've not all come out yet, but I'm done with them. <laughs> 
And um, this is probably coming out, I think, the 1st of March, because I think Easter is like the beginning of April, the very beginning of April. It's early this year. But um, anyway, this was a lot of fun to make. Some of the stuff I had made for other videos and I had um, left over, you know, the, the stems and some of the yellow glass there. And I don't know, but if you can see, <laughs> The extra flowers that I added down at the end and then I put the leaves on there I forgot I always forget to put leaves on stems for some reason and I'm always rushing at the last minute running into the other room and getting them but this art resin has you know a 45 minute work time so you have plenty of time if you forget something and this Ashland decorative filler and the rhinestone chains for the bunny rabbit was super super easy to do um, I just can't tell you how easy it is. You just uh, slap a picture behind the glass, anything that you want, and follow along the lines with your uh, rhinestone chain and put the, the Ashland decorative filler in the inside and it looks so pretty and it's so easy to color. They always have the silver reflective glass up at Michael's and you can color it with the, uh, the Krylon or the Tamiya translucent spray paints. It does not lose its reflective quality. Can you see? Well, this one's I didn't paint, but <laughs> see how pretty and shiny it is or sparkly. Even after, well, let's see, you would be able to see it on the purple because I did paint the purple. And um, you can also use the alcohol ink. Some, I'm finding out that some alcohol inks are better than other alcohol inks. And um, I do not recommend alcohol ink on regular glass, like pieces of glass like this, but for the Ashland Decorative Filler crushed glass, I don't know if it's because they're porous and uh, it holds the color, but I've not had any fading problems with that. So that's another way to color the Ashland Decorative Filler. And um, I don't know, I, I love to hear, I love to hear from you guys. I love to hear your comments, suggestions. If you have any questions, um, I'd love to see what you're making. My email's under my about information. You can send me photos. And um, anyway, if you guys enjoyed the videos, the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to be notified of future videos, go ahead and subscribe. And I hope you guys all have a great day. Thanks for watching.